Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. <coughs> um, today we will talk about capacitors uh, in the AC circuit, alternating current circuit with a capacitor. Well, this lecture is part of the course Physics 14 presented on Unizor.com. I suggest you to watch this lecture from the website um, because every lecture, including this one, has a text uh, uh, associated with this lecture. So you basically have both the textbook and the live presentation. Um, also, the whole course is arranged in obviously some sequence, so there is order. Um, lectures are arranged in menus. Uh, and you also have exams if you really want to challenge yourself. Um, the site, by the way, is absolutely free. There are no ads. You don't even have to sign on. Um, and there is a prerequisite course on the same site, Mass for Teens. Mass is a definite prerequisite for physics, and it's used like, everywhere. Okay, so we will talk about capacitors in the alternating current uh, circuits. Well, first of all, capacitors were addressed earlier in this course, and I do suggest you to refer to the lecture um, about capacitors. It's um, in the topic um, about electrical field, I think. So you go to unizor.com, the course is Physics 14, obviously, um, electromagnetism is the main topic and within that topic there is electric fields and inside electric fields you have capacitors. So I assume that you know what basically capacitor is. Well just briefly it's just two plates which can be parallel to each other obviously um, and they can store electricity. Why? Because if there is a negative a charge on one plate, there is a positive on another plate, and they attract each other, but they don't touch each other, so they don't exchange electrons. They're just storing this particular energy as long as you have, well, either you have the voltage uh, with a plus and minus from some battery connected to them, and then when they're charged, these two plates, uh, you can disconnect the battery, the charge will remain, right? Now, in our case, the source of electricity is not the battery, which is a direct current, but some kind of a uh, power plant which generates alternating current. So we will have alternating current coming into both plates, and that's very important, actually. Now, first of all, let me just differentiate between um, capacitors used in DC direct current and in AC alternating current. In case of DC, all you can do is you can charge the capacitor. If you connect, the okay, this is the capacitor, okay? Two plates. Now, if you connect it to a battery, then the uh, plus goes to plus, minus goes to minus. So certain number of electrons will be accumulated here and deficiency of electrons will be there. That's basically it. There is no current running here. Now what happens actually is electrons are generated by the battery. Battery has certain chemical reaction, let's say, which separates the uh, top level electrons from the atoms, free electrons, so, so to speak. They're not really firmly attached to atoms. So the energy inside the battery separates the electrons. Electrons go here. Uh, absence of electrons, holes basically remaining uh, in atoms are going there. So electrons are circulating basically from here to here. That's what's being done actually. Now, you have certain excess electrons here. And obviously they um, repel each other. So this battery is pushing electrons and it pushes 
up to a certain extent when this plate is saturated uh, this battery cannot push it anymore so it all depends on the capacity of the capacitor and the voltage which battery actually can develop so the voltage and the amount of electricity uh, accumulated in uh, in the capacitor are actually connected with a very simple formula that um, uh, U is the voltage and um, if you will multiply it by some kind of um, factor which depends on the properties of this capacitor which is called capacity you will get amount of electricity which can be stored amount of charge actually no more than that I mean because again with certain voltage here you have certain pressure of electrons they will accumulate here until they saturate enough so their own repelling force will prevent pushing anymore so that's what actually is established this is a constant which depends only on the capacitor itself the size of the plates and distance between the plates and what kind of a substance in between the plates right so this is the just the characteristic of capacitor but other than that they are proportion, pr pr proportional uh, the voltage which develops the better by, by the battery and the amount of electricity here so this is the law of capacitors we'll just keep it in mind but what's important is there is no current running here electrons will go there and stop at some point accumulating certain charge there is no current okay let's replace this with the source of alternating current so you have an alternating voltage here what happens in this case well actually the situation is very different <coughs> so what kind of a alternating voltage actually is developed well we know that it's usually a variable which has certain maximum and then sine of omega t where omega is angular speed of rotor rotating in the power station whatever the power plant is there is something mechanical which is uh, which m movements of which are converted into um, alternate alternating current right so this is the angular speed of rotation of whatever turbine or whatever it is whatever the source of electricity is and um, this is the peak value of uh, voltage and this is basically a function of time so as the time goes we have this uh, voltage sinusoidally changing with time goes to the positive maximum then down to zero to negative maximum down to zero etc Sin sinusoidal movement so that's what happens here okay so what happens here okay when um, this particular function the voltage is in such a way that it develops positive here and negative there then the positive charge goes here and again it reaches certain maximum as in case of direct current and stops negative goes here the same thing and it stops okay so now we have this positive and this negative electricity went to this and stopped electricity went to this and stopped not electricity the charges electrons are their absence the holes but then what happens then this thing is changing so first it's increasing its positive thing to a maximum then it's decreasing this um, voltage this EMF right when it's decreasing then the axis of charge here 
becomes more becomes stronger than the EMF here and the charge goes back here same thing here so the positive goes back here and negative goes back here then we reach zero and that means there is no charge anywhere then the polarity is changing now this becomes negative and this becomes positive so now the electrons goes here negative and the positive goes here and then again up to a certain saturation point when um, voltage uh, reaches its other maximum the negative maximum okay and then again it stops then the negative um, maximum starts growing to zero now which means it's pressure from here and from here is weakening so the charges go back here now negative goes back here positive goes back here and now we're changing again the polarity now the positive is here and negative is here and basically the whole thing repeats and repeats and, aga and again so what happens is that although there is no connection here between the plates but the electrons will flow here and here here and here all the time and then again and again and again so basically that constitutes the current because if you will put some, something like a, a lamp here well it will uh, it will be lit it will be lit up all right so but my point is that though there is no actually physical circuit here but with um, alternating EMF alternating voltage here the electricity will flow here and here and here and here and that's very very important so capacitor in AC well you can say that it actually lets the current flow uh, which is different from DC, from direct current, when uh, the capacitor actually prevents the, the flow. It reaches its maximum saturation point and then it stops. And by the way, it reaches saturation point with a speed of almost like speed of light. So it's instantaneous, basically. Okay, so that's done. Now I would like to go into um, calculations. I would like to know how exactly the current is going through this thing. Well, if it's a circuit, if it's a DC circuit, let's say I have a lamp here. Now, if it's a direct current, that's obvious. We have U equals I times R. Voltage is equal to current times resistor resistance of this lamp. Now, if it's an alternate current, alternating current, actually it's exactly the same thing. The only thing different is that it's not just U equals is u of t is equal to i of t times r. So these are functions. They are changing with time. How? Well, u is changing this way. And that's why i of t is changing similarly. I just divide by u max divided by r sine of omega t. So this thing becomes i max. So, if there is no capacitor, my current is completely in sync with my voltage, with my EMF. Okay, fine. What if there is a capacitor? And the story is completely different. What is the current? Well, current is amount of electricity p 
per unit of time. It's a rate of change of uh, the uh, flow of electricity, a rate of change of, car, uh, of, of charge, basically. Well, we know the charge here, where u is actually u of t. C is a constant, and that's why amount of electricity accumulated on the plates Q will also be a function of time. And what is I of t in, in this particular terminology? Well, that's a rate of change, which is first derivative of amount of electricity, of the charge, uh, derivative by time. Okay? That's what rate of change is, right? <laughs> hmm, that's interesting. Now, let's substitute here. C U max sine omega T and that's derivative by time equals to this is the constant, this is the constant so it's C times U max now, derivative of sine is a cosine, but I do have in inner function, so I have to then multiply by derivative of the inner function, which is omega, and then cosine omega t equals c omega u max. Now, I will change cosine into sine. I hope you didn't forget your trigonometry. This is replaced with this. These are identities. So, what's the most important difference here between this and in case of uh, direct current? In the case of direct current, my, um, my current is in sync, proportional, in sync with my voltage. In case of uh, alternating current, my current is not exactly in sync. You see, this is omega t, and this is omega t plus pi over 2. So if you will do the graph, this is sine, and now we are shifting it by pi over 2. So this is shifted So what's important here is that my current is shifted it, it, they're saying it's a phase phase is equal to um, pi over 2 so it's phased uh, by pi over 2 by 90 degrees actually uh, over the um, voltage. So when voltage goes up, for instance here, my current goes down. Then voltage goes down and my current goes up to a negative sink. Then again voltage goes to a negative sink and the current goes this way. So there is a difference here. And actually it can be explained because Let's see, we start from the very beginning. Zero here, zero here. All right? Now, as soon as we start raising the voltage, let's say, on this particular um, pole of the generator, we start increasing the voltage. Well, this was zero. So the rate, obviously, would be the biggest because it's much easier to start from zero to increase, let's say, by, 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 by factor of two. From zero is very easy than if you already have something to increase by factor of two, right? And the current is this rate of change. So the rate of change would be the biggest in the very beginning. You see here, if this is u of t and this is i of t. So i is the biggest current is the biggest when u is in the very very beginning right after zero 
then as we go we accumulate certain charge here and that certain charge repels electrons so it becomes more and more difficult so this thing is increasing to its maximum but my um, rate of change of the charge here is decreasing to zero and at the very end of this when my voltage is reaching the maximum my um, my current is around zero you cannot increase anymore the rate becomes um, zero now what happens then well what happens then my charge starts diminishing right my, my my voltage becomes less and less now as soon as we start diminishing my voltage the axis of electrons here which is uh, which used to be on the maximum starts decreasing and that's why when it's decreasing my rate is negative and that's why it goes negative and obviously at the very end when there is nothing here my rate is maximum negative etc so basically i mean this is the logical explanation of why we have such a difference in um, in phase okay what's left well basically that's it the only little thing is this is obviously called i max so i have this i max equals to u times c times w max or u max divided by xc where xc is 1 over c w c is a capacity omega is um, angular speed now why did they introduce this because now it looks like a ohm's law you see this is the current this is the voltage and this is more well, like resistance so basically this thing for capacitor is in some way equivalent to resistance um, it's called uh, reactance reactance they, they just come up with some terminology I don't think it's very important quite frankly now what's the most important in this lecture is this pi over 2 so we also have sin sinusoidal uh, current which goes altern alternating current is also sinusoidal in exactly the same fashion as EMF produced by the power plane plant but the sinusoidal is shifted by phase by pi over 2 now that's very important because in some cases we can have from the same source we have one circuit of this kind another circuit with uh, some kind of a resistor now we will have here certain current and we will have here certain current but these currents are out of phase by pi over 2 because there is no res uh, r there is a resistor here there is no um, uh, capacitor and there is a capacitor there so this will introduce a current which is shifted uh, in its sinusoidal oscillation by pi over 2 over this current and then we can use these two things two currents both are uh, sinusoidal but shifted by phase by pi over 2 that can be used in uh, certain electrical motors and I will talk about this in the next lecture okay so I suggest you to read the text for this lecture you go to unisor.com to physics for teens uh, course go to electromagnetism uh, alternate current and uh, among the alternate currents you will find this lecture about capacitors thank you very much and good luck